Hey folks, it's Real Lossy with John Rithlin. I'm John Rithlin. This is part three of the worst wrestling matches I've seen. <clears throat> um, I pretty much come up with the criteria where I'm just going to talk about two matches. Um, maybe three, depending on what it is, but I'm not going to go two. I'm not going to like go, you know, just blitz through some of them. Because um, I got a law list and I figured this is a nice way of, you know, find out. These are matches, if you, if you want to watch them, you've been warned they're really bad. That's just pretty much it. Watch a lot of wrestling, 31 years and counting. I have no intention of ever, of ever stopping to watch wrestling, even as much as I might want to, you know, strangle some of the people that are involved in WWE. Um, I don't even pay as much attention to TNA anymore. And anytime I do, I just get angry because Josh Matthews can't commentate for nothing. <clears throat> and I get frustrated knowing that that company could be so much more, but Dixie Carter is an absolute idiot and can't run the company for crap. And has now bungled the whole thing and now is getting sued by everybody. But also because the talent suffers. And the talent should not suffer. There's too much talent, even still in that company, to be used um, <clears throat> the way they are. Anyway, so that's a little bit of a rant to begin with. This is some more TNA matches that I'm going to uh, talk about. And no, this is not a strict TNA rant. Like the worst matches I've seen. TNA matches will be involved on this. But, you know, on, on some of these shows, but actually after the next one, especially, I'm going to get back more into uh, w, into WWE and WCW matches because there's a lot more of those. I mean, even though TNA has been around a while, there's a lot more in WCW and WWE than there are you know, bad matches than there were in TNA. Anyway, Sting versus Ric Flair. It was the uh, September 5th, and I had to write the dates down so I remember it because even though I'd seen the matches, stuff blends together. Uh, September 15th edition, uh, 2011, of Impact. And Sting had been trying to get at Hogan and get at Hogan and get at Hogan. And this was Flair wrestling. I don't know why Flair was still wrestling in 2011. I mean, I know he needed money, but my God, Flair, you should have you spent your money better and saved your money better. Because <clears throat> even Sting wasn't, you know, wasn't the performer that he was. I mean, I bet, I bet you that Sting regrets um, not going to WWE in 2011. I mean, he should have, because in retrospect, he might end up in wrestling in 2016, but guess what? Or 2015, rather. But guess what? He would have been probably a bit richer, but also, w I mean, even though he said his money, WWE would have used him better. Because even though T TNA didn't use him all that well the past couple of years, the last two years, um, he had a TNA title run in, like, I think just before this, before this match with Ric Flair, I think it ended, he faced, um... Shite, who'd he face? Was it Anderson or was it Angle? I think it was Angle. Anyway, whatever. Um, Sting versus Ric Flair, they had a great match like ten and a half years before this on the last episode of Nitro. But, my God, I mean, it's like even Flair didn't care for that match because he hadn't worked much in six months and he was wrestling in his shirt. And he was still able to do well and it was great. It was a, you know, Night of Champions, Clash of Champions thing. It was a... It was a good theme, and Sting and Flair got to close out Nitro because they faced off uh, uh, on the first Nitro. They closed out this Nitro, the last one, and it was fitting. This one was just sad because Flair couldn't even really wrestle. Um, he couldn't really take too many bumps. I mean, he did, but he shouldn't have been taking bumps, and Sting lost a lot of speed and a lot of luster. And, okay, was it as bad as his match with Jeff Hardy earlier in the year? Well, no, of course not. Um, Flair at least showed up. Flair might have been drunk a lot, but I don't believe he ever wrestled drunk, or at least he didn't wrestle drunk often. Uh, his promos and, you know, giant um, amount of red skin notwithstanding. But still, there was quite a, there was quite a bit of um, sadness watching this because it was two greats that really should have not been wrestling anymore, or at least Flair shouldn't have been wrestling anymore. Sting had a couple years left. <clears throat> But Flair did not. Flair wrestled about three, four years too long. And this was just really, really sad to watch. And then we get to a match that happened a little bit after this one. Because Sting, the stipulation was if Sting beat Flair, he would get to face Hogan about for glory. <clears throat> then he had this thing where Hogan said he would put the company on the line. He had control of the company in storyline, even though I have a feeling he actually had legit had control of the company. Because Dixie opened up her, probably opened up her legs as much as she opened up her wallet. Um... Yeah, I said it. I think that's pretty much how she kept a lot of talent there. She opened up her legs. Um, Hogan versus Sting. If Sting won, if Sting lost, he'd have to retire. If Sting won, or something like that, if he had to retire, I think, and then Sting won, 
co control the company went back to Dixie Carter, and it was an embarrassment. Hogan couldn't take bumps because he had about 50,000 back surgeries. He was bleeding. I think Sting, or I think Sting was bleeding even at one point. Garrett Bischoff, Eric Bischoff's legit son, was the referee and was there. And my God, it was just so bad. I mean, I'm like, what? what is it? I mean, they couldn't have possibly thought that Hogan could have bumped at all. I mean, they could have had Hogan on the outside, you know, because he couldn't, he couldn't bump, he couldn't really take any hits, he couldn't fall really, I mean, he couldn't even fall before a couple back surgeries when he had a tag match when he teamed with Abyss against Styles and Flair in March of 2010. Um, because Hogan was just so beat up. I mean, he, he, years in the business, decades in the business, and even though he had taken care of himself, <clears throat> he was, he was beat to crap, and this match was perfect evidence. I mean, it was ridiculous, too, because, uh, Eric Bischoff was like to Garrett, hey, do not, do not, you know, it doesn't matter if Hogan taps out or whatever, you do not call this or whatever. You call it strictly in Hogan's favor. Well, Hogan... After, God, it was, oh my God, after what seemed like ages, even though it was only a few minutes, Sting gets a Scorpion Deathlock sort of on Hogan. He's not really sitting down because he doesn't want to hurt Hogan's back, but Hogan ends up, you know, tapping out, giving up or whatever, and Garrett finally calls for it. Well, <clears throat> so, suddenly Dixie has control of the company again. Well, Sting gets beat up by Immortal, which Immortal, I never understood what exactly, how many members there were in Immortal. It seemed like they were trying to do what they did with the NWO and just make it like about 50,000 people. And it was hor My God, it was horrible. It was just terrible. They all hit the ring and are like beaten up. I mean, I think including Wes Briscoe. I think he was part... Was he part of uh, Immortal? I might be confusing with Ace and Nates. I don't know. Wes Briscoe was terrible. Um, but Sting's getting beat up. Hogan's in the corner. Just this, 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 this kind of stuff or whatever. He's bleeding. And Sting... <laughs> This is the part that just made me just like I mean I remember even watching the pay per view with my at the time my at the time best friend now former best friend if I ever see him again I'm just gonna scream at him that's another personal story for another day but I remember just things like you know crawling Hulk, Hulk help me help me Hulk and I'm like what is he doing and Hulk suddenly Hulk's up like. You know, does the, I can't do the facial expressions and stuff like that, but does that fa same facial expressions you've been doing in the 80s and the 90s, and, you know, suddenly rises up, hulks up, tears his shirt, boom, boom, starts hitting, ham hitting hammer bit fists on people and knocking people out of the ring, throwing people out of the ring, him and Sting clean house, and then they celebrate or whatever, and Hogan's back to being a baby face. And then sadly was somehow with the company still for about two more years, at, well, just under two years after that. Somehow they kept doing, God, it was, why, why did, why did they invest in Hogan? You know, in fact, that might be another thing, um, <clears throat> another thing, things that killed TNA. In fact, I'm going to start writing that list after this, but Hogan versus Sting, I mean, their match at Star K 97 was built up like crazy and for circum for reasons and certain circumstances that played into it. Sting was in a dark place in his life and ended up in the gym a lot and Hogan wasn't the best worker either at that point. Um, even when he was leaner. I mean, he was a lot leaner than he was in uh, WWE. He had actually, especially from about 92 on, he had lost quite, he had lost at least, I'd say, 30 pounds. And he was, he was trimmer. But he still wasn't a good worker, and him and Sting, God, it was a horrible match. And none of the matches they had later were any good either. But this match was just so bad. It was like, in Bound for Glory 2011 wasn't a great event, but it had... Really good matches like um, Rude versus Angle, and it had some other stuff too. But it had some good pieces to it, and they botched the whole thing. Which, like, this is the match people most remember it for, for the wrong reasons. And that was TNA's problem with bringing in guys like this, especially guys like Hogan. Making him an authority figure or something is fine. But trying to have the guy actually wrestle and having him appear all the time was ridiculous. You made him a special appear, a uh, special uh, attraction. He would have drawn more. But anyway, that's what I gotta say about those two matches. Uh, just both were just absolutely horrible. Anyway, do you agree? Do you disagree? Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at the link in the description. It's been Real Aussie with John Ritland. I'm John Ritland. I'll see you soon.